India may soon make history, going where no human or robot has gone before. Chandrayaan-3 is India's 615 crore mission to soft land near the moon's south pole. It is the second such attempt by the Indian Space Research Organization, also known as ISRO, in the last four years. If the mission is successful, India will become the first country in the world to land near the lunar south pole. It will also place India in a small league of countries after the United States, the former Soviet Union and China to land a spacecraft on the moon. So why is Chandrayaan-3 so significant? Why is ISRO choosing to land near the lunar south pole? And what makes this region so fascinating to scientists across the world? To explain all of this and more, I'll be joined by Girish Lingana, a Bengaluru-based aerospace expert. Chandrayaan-3 was launched using India's biggest rocket, the launch vehicle Mark III, at 2.35 p.m. on July 14th from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. After traveling a distance of 3.84 lakh kilometers, Chandrayaan-3 is expected to land on the moon around six weeks later. This is much slower compared to the lunar and Apollo missions of the 1950s and 60s. Why? Listen to what aerospace expert Girish Lingana had to say. One is the rocket thrust, what we are using, is very low compared to the, the rocket which was used earlier like Saturn V or something like that. They had a capacity of more than, I can say, 15 to 20 times more than the what the rocket we are using. And next is the economics of the uh what you can say is the space travel see we are looking into the economics part also see our now this project cost is not more than 615 crores maybe most of the hollywood movies or even the bollywood movies may reach this uh cost in what we are doing with chandrayaan so why we are taking so many days is See, once the spacecraft is launched, that is the LVM-3, which is also known as Bahubali, the, spraysca- the spacecraft goes into an orbit called as Earth Parking Orbit, which is around 200 to 600 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. In the Earth Parking Orbit, we spend some days seeing the functionality of the spacecraft, like lot of maneuvers experiments are done on the earth or being earth living orbit once we are stable and stabilized in the earth uh, parking orbit then it moves into the lunar trajectory path so lunar tra- tra- trajectory path is like an highway going to the moon so these maneuvers this earth parking orbit, uh, stay at earth parking or- orbit and doing seven maneuvers to go to the lunar path, these are all a time consuming process. So it takes approximately 46 to 48 days. So how exactly does this landing take place? Chandrayaan-3 is made up of three modules, the propulsion, the lander and the rover. The propulsion module will carry the lander and the rover to a circular orbit around the moon. On August 23rd or August 24th, the lander will separate from the propulsion module and attempt to soft land on the moon's surface. Once it is successfully landed on the moon, the rover which is inside the lander will be deployed on the lunar surface. These dates, August 23rd or August 24th, are specifically chosen because the sun rises on the moon then. Sunlight is essential for both the lander and the rover to function and both these modules are expected to be operational for 14 Earth days. If for whatever reason ISRO is unable to soft land on the moon during this August 23rd, 24th window, then it will have to wait another month before it can do so. See, why we need a sunlight is when a lander lands on the uh, surface of the moon, it uh, it has to perform certain scientific uh, experiments on the moon. And also rover also will uh, do one or two scientific experiments on the moon. I will not go into the depth of the experiments, what all they are going to do, but it's all understanding the tropography of the moon, then the chemical analysis of the material, that is the in-situ experiments. In-situ experiments means 
they we won't bring any material to the earth and do the analysis we will do there itself that is called as the in situ experiments for doing all these things we need a power we need a power for the rover to travel we need a power for the lander to carry out the experiments there so for that there are solar panels which are been placed on the uh, uh, lander and also on the rover so this battery may get drained out very fast so when there is a sunlight they can take that it can absorb and store the energy and it can start moving do the experiment wait for some time again uh, uh, recharge this battery and continue carrying this experiment so why is chandrayaan 3 significant besides the fact that only three countries in the world have managed to land on the moon in over 60 years If the Chandrayaan-3 mission is successful, India would become the first in the world to land near the lunar south pole. All previous spacecraft have landed near the moon's equator. China's Chang'e 4 lunar probe, which incidentally was the first in the world to land on the far side of the moon in 2019, had landed in the 45 degrees south latitude. Chandrayaan-3, however, is expected to go further south. The landing site is expected to be in the 70 degree latitude range. So why has no other country landed on the moon's south pole as of yet? Well, it's not for lack of trying. Chandrayaan-2 had in 2019 also attempted to soft land near the moon's south pole, but its lander ended up crashing during its descent. The crash was later attributed to a software glitch. Earlier that same year, an Israeli lunar lander also attempted to soft land on the moon, but it ended up crashing. More recently in April, a private Japanese lunar lander named Hakuto R also attempted to soft land on the moon but it also ended up crashing. See much of the moon missions what Americans have done and now the Artemis what they are going to do is human mission and also the landing they always selected a site where it is very smooth where the spacecraft will not get any damage where the atmosphere is very conducive. for the spacecrafts to move on so the equatorial region was the very very sound and very safe place for them to land so they always prefer to land on the equatorial areas but landing on the south pole you know even the israelis failed last year even the japanese failed last year because of the harsh landing yes the, the terrain is very difficult see earlier for chandrayaan 2 they had fixed the site around 500 meters for 500 meters that is where the lander had to land but now they have increased the area from 4 4 by 2.5 kilometers so they have increased the terrain and uh, they will see the terrain because they have installed cameras on the lander So just to summarize the reason why earlier missions have chosen landing sites near the moon's equator is because the terrain is flatter compared to the south pole which have large craters temperatures also plummet to minus 230 degrees celsius making it difficult to operate instruments in the extreme cold several paths are also not exposed to sunlight these are the reasons why it is especially challenging to land near the moon's south pole But these factors are also the reasons why the South Pole is such a fascinating place for scientists. It has been found out there is a water molecules in the South Pole. When there is a, uh, a water molecules, it is understood there is there is there is more scope of further exploration because with water you can human life can start. or the oxygen can be separated and uh, be given and also um, even for rocket propulsion you can use uh, hydrogen or uh, so many things when they, when you understand there is a water molecule inside the uh, south pole and in south pole there are lot of craters craters means uh, all over portion in the earth and also there are hills also so there are both hills are also there craters are also there in 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 craters it, the depth is so much that in billions of years the light has not been able to reach the depth of the craters so in the craters there is understood there is lot of water molecule with soil embedded in that molecule, in that water it is not like a pure water what you see it is like a water with so- soil embedded in it and it 
it is lying there from billion of years so by testing this by testing this particular thing you can find out the beginning of the solar system or you can find out many uh, uh, what you can say explorations with these uh, molecules what is being embedded so that is where we are targeting the south pole uh, very particularly where the light is very less where the illumination of the area is very less and where the shadows are very high and where the sunlight does not reach at all uh, to the many areas in the craters in fact it was the chandrayaan 1 mission that was launched in 2008 that confirmed the presence of ice on the moon the presence of water is critical to any future explorations including manned missions to the moon These are also the reasons why several countries have planned missions to the moon south pole in the coming years. Russia has scheduled Luna 25, a lunar lander mission for August this year as well. The United States has Artemis 3, which will be NASA's first human mission to the moon south pole. It's been planned for 2025, and China too is in the race and aims to put astronauts on the moon south pole before 2030. So as the countdown for the moon begins, All eyes will be on Chandrayaan 3 as it will prove critical not just for India but for the future of lunar exploration. That's all from me for this week but before I go a quick reminder to support independent news organizations like the News Minute. You can do so by becoming a member. The link is in the description. Also subscribe to our YouTube channels and as always if you like this video hit the like button and share this video with your friends.